Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Deep Rock Galactic, the board game, and today we're doing mission 3 called The Great Unknown. I presume it's called that because there's three unknown caves and a cluster on the left there that you can see. And the special rule for the mission is if we break into one of them, they all get revealed simultaneously, which could mean a bunch of enemies spawn when we break through. There's also two new enemy types already spawned on the map to start with. There's the Spitballer, which is right there. It's pretty tanky. It's got 5 HP, range 7. It doesn't move though so it just stays there it's got quite a few resistances as well including this stun and then the other one is a brood nexus it doesn't attack it doesn't move you just roll two of the, the enemy dice and if it gets a crit it spawns a grunt when it dies it gets a free activation to try and spawn some grunts as it dies as well there is some nighter on the map the the randomized red gems there is some gold and they're just optional the only objective this time around is to find four alien eggs and there's five potential question marks uh, one of them is hidden behind the spitballer but there's one there one there and then one in each of the three unknown caves four of those question marks are eggs one is just a loot bug we just need to get the four eggs and then get out the mission specific event this time might also mean that we get stumbled a lot because the the vol volcanic no not volcanic uh, earthquakes Earthquakes are happening in this section of the planet, so ever so often everything shakes. It's a thing from the video game. We're starting on difficulty 3. Let's go look at what randomised rock and stone and grenade cards we have, and then we'll get started. So let's see what we have for the scout. His randomised grenade is, this time, a proximity grenade. Okay, does explosive damage. And his rock and stone card is... Look what I found! Look through the throwable deck. Oh, so you can just choose a grenade. Interesting. Okay, we'll try and remember and use that. Engineer. Oh, we saw this last time. That's a very good one, the corrosive bomb. Does one flat damage, very good for clearing out grunts. I think we might actually get out of this alive. Another voice line from the game. Distribute two health tokens from the general supply to other dwarves. Still not 100% sure whether or not that just means you can do it or if there has to be a supply pod. But the, the benefit is you don't need to be adjacent to a supply pod to do it. That's how we'll play it if indeed I do call one down. And our other two dwarves, the grenade for the gunner is a electrocution grenade, range 4, okay, it can stun, and his rock and stone card is rock solid, deal 1 additional damage when making an attack, it's good, and then the grenade for the driller, cryo grenade, he does actually get a cryo launcher, so the grenade kind of fits his theme, or his alternative theme I should say, and his rock and stone card is we rock. All other dwarves draw a throwable if they have none. So I really should prioritise burning through grenades this time, I guess, because we have a means by which to just replenish them from the supply. Alright, well, I think it's time to get started. I'm going to be doing the same order as last time, so it's going to be Scout, Gunner, Engineer, Driller, just so I can keep track of it easy like that. Uh, and yeah, let's jump in. Turn one. So obviously as we start with the Scout, we've got the threat of the Spitballer there, who is resistant to explosives, close combat, stun, and also just the general green damage dies. Not the armor piercing though, so the scout going first is a pretty good thing. He's going to move three, one, two, three, and then we're going to remember his passive, which is when he finishes a move action, you can shoot for free. He'll expend some primary ammo. Now, what is the best bet here? Ooh, I would say... Burst fire and lets us roll two and pick one. Well, we'll obviously pick the two damage. And, ooh, I don't have a die handy or the cubes handy to mark his health. Let's just try and remember. He's got five, and that did two. And then his second action, because that was a free action, he's going to do the same again. Perfect. We'll take two more damage. So he's got one health left. And we'll do it again. It's burned through a lot of his primary ammo, but it's removing the hard enemy instantly. Yeah, we'll take, well, it doesn't matter. We'll take the two, and that gets rid of him. Now that is his turn already done. My plan, I forgot to mention, I do have a plan. My plan is to link into the caves down the south of the map, because spawn point one is there, which is the most common spawn point. I'm going to have either the gunner or the engineer nip over there. I should have done it with the scout, really. Actually, I might do it with the scout next turn, just to nip over there and check that question mark and then have the rest push south past the spawner. But anyway, first event card, Unsettling Rumblings. Well, that's very accurate for the mission-specific role. Increase the swarm threat by one. If it didn't trigger a swarm, draw another event card. Oh dear, well, it didn't trigger an event, or a spawn, I should say, so 
Draw another one. Dug out surprise. Place a grunt on an empty ground space adjacent to you. Dwarves within attack range can do a free attack, otherwise it attacks us. Well, in that case, I'll put it behind me here and then have the driller take a pot shot with his gun, his uh, secondary gun I should say, which is three green dice. Has to be the same target, but that's fine, we just need one success. Perfect. The grunt does not get to eat me, and that's his turn done. The gunner is going to have a real quick turn. I'm actually not sure if dwarves are allowed to stand on spawn points. I'm not 100% sure on that, but he's only going to be passing by. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's check this. See what it is. It's one of the alien eggs. Okay, so that hopefully means... Uh, well, actually, I don't really mind where the loot bug is, because we're going to have to check all of them. <laughs> anyway, he can't see the spawner from where he is, and he has one action left. I am going to... One, two, three. He's going to be very brave. He's going to shoot it to Kingdom Come next turn, and we're just going to have to hope that... It, well, even if it triggers, there's no guarantee it's going to do a spawn. But on that note, let's see what happens. Sticky Spitter. Increase the swarm threat by one. It's going to trigger a swarm. If it didn't trigger... No, it did. It did indeedy. So, first... Uh, the spawn card. Look up. Place one Macterra spawn at exits one and three and a grunt. Oh, wait, no. At exit one and three grunts at exit two. Then activate all creatures. That is terrible news. Well, that is a lot of enemies. We're going to start because all creatures have to activate. With this, does it spawn anything? It does. It spawns one grunt. I hope that. I don't think I rolled on camera, but I rolled one exclamation mark. So one grunt gets spat out by the Brood Nexus. Uh, three grunts are attacking the scout. The Mycterra spawn has range three, so it can't reach. So it's going to go one, two, three, and position itself to attack if it gets the chance. So we'll roll two of these, and then we have to roll one more. So that is one damage so far on the scout. That is two damage on the scout from those three. That was a very, very bad card to draw at that precise moment. Going to go with the engineer next, and let's see what we can do. Hmm. If he chucked his grenade, it would hit the scout, but it would also kill all three grunts and do one damage to the Mactera that has two health. I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, we're gonna go one, two, three to here. He's gonna chuck his grenade, it's uh, the one hex, and then one hex around the hex. Throw it at the scout, it does one flat damage. So it's gonna remove all three of these scouts. Unfortunately, he's going to get called a Leaf Lover because he's also dealt one more damage to the scout, leaving him on two health. But, uh, oh, and that, no, it would have to be that square, sorry, because that way it would catch him and the Mactera. And then he's going to pickaxe the Mactera to do the final damage for his third action. He did it with two. Goodbye. Now, where was that gold I accidentally knocked? It was there. So he didn't use any ammo, but he did use his grenade, and he used his pickaxe, and he almost killed his friend. That's fine. They, they get over it quick. Dwarves are sturdy. Sweet spot. The walls around you are covered in golden red sugar. Will you take some time to gather some? Optional. If you aren't prone, roll the mining die for each pickaxe symbol rolled. Gain either two health or one gold, then increase swarm threat by one. I'll just increase the threat now. Gold is... Uh, there is an opportunity for gold, so sure, he can roll and see what he gets. He'll take one gold for that. I'll have to go look it out because we have to leave the ones on the map there. But yeah, okay, we have one gold in the pool. And we're down to the driller who isn't going to be able to do much really. He's going to go one, two, three, one, two, hmm, three. He's going to start walking through the wall here. Because the gunner's next turn is going to be occupied by fighting the brood nexus. So the driller might as well break through there. Scout's next turn is going to be to back up and check that. Yeah, I think that's going to do. Alright, event card for the driller. I have a plan. There's a pebble in my book. Collect one gold, increase swarm threat by one. So we're up to two gold now. Nice. So as we come back around to the scout, I did forget to flip over the drop pod. Because all dwarves are out of there. Oops, that's not laid up correctly, sorry. Like that. And then the scout is 
trying to stay alive. One, two, three, one. To check this, it is actually one of the eggs, so that's potentially good. But him staying right next to a spawn is terrible. So his last action is just going to be to go over here, one, two, three. Because he is so low health, I kind of just want him to hold the front line for when the drop pod reappears, so he can guide people in. I don't know if that's the... I mean, oh, his ammo is pretty low as well. Hmm, well, either way, his turn is over this time around. I'm just not sure what else to do with him. Fast critters, increase swarm threat by one. There we go. If it didn't trigger a swarm, it did not. All creatures move and attack. Okay. Well, the grunt that spawned here is going to move and attack the gunner. And he's hitting him for one. Oh, I should have only rolled one die there. I'll roll one die again. Okay, he missed that time. Exclamation marks do nothing for grunts. Now I roll two of them and see if a brood nexus spawns. It does not. It needs a crit there. Now that accidentally worked out better in my favour. That was genuinely forgetting the order of operations there. Uh, I think that's it for that. One away from a new swarm card though. So annoyingly that brood nexus is resistant to the green dice. Although the powered minigun is firing three of them. Well, let's do an attack action with him. We'll use up one primary ammo. We'll do it on the grunt next to him. So we roll three, and then we, as a free action, okay, it kills the grunt. As a free action, we can fire the minigun again. It doesn't count as an action. It still uses ammo though, so we'll do that. So at this time it's on the brood nexus, so it's roll minus one. So we still manage to do one damage. It has um, five health as well. Now, at this point we could fire again as a free action. I will. We're burning through ammo, but I will. One, am uh, one damage again. So it's got three health left. At this point, we've still only used one action. I'm going to fire the secondary, which is a single blue die. It does one damage because he has no resistance to that. So that means he has, what, two health left? And then as his final action, we'll fire another load of secondary, and hopefully this will kill him left him on one health. Annoying, he's got one health left and that's going to be it. I think the driller is going to have to be the one to bust through. The gunner is going to have to mine this nighter so we can call resupply because this mission is eating ammo like nobody's business. But yeah, the brood nexus has one health left and now we need an event card for the gunner. And it's going to cause a swarm, almost certainly. They go boom, activate all creatures. If no creatures are in play, place an, ex an exploder X at one instead. Well, thankfully, it didn't increase the swarm, actually, so... Key activates. Does he spawn anything? Yes, he does. He grunt pops out. Right there. And with the Engineer, I think we can actually set up a pretty nice defensive line. So, action-wise, one, two, three. That simple. Next, he's gonna punt a grenade onto the grunt. The explosion will catch the Nexus because uh, as long as I do the one that's an explosive. So he'll use one primary ammo. It's a single red die applied to all. Oh, it's scared, which I presume does nothing to the Nexus because it can't be scared because it can't move and the grunt has nowhere to run to. That's a problem because that means he'd have to fire again. See, I wanted for his third action to put the turret down because the turret has perfect line of sight of both spawn points, which is kind of perfect. It's very likely we're about to draw a swarm card. Yeah, primary ammo and an action to spawn his turret. He will put his turret behind him here. So that means anything that pops at space two instantly gets shot at. He can't quite reach spot one unless they spawn in front of it because that would be range three right here. But they'd have to move over the chasm at which point he would get a free shot. Not necessarily going to kill anything except the grunt, but should hopefully help. Swarm card, or rather event card, which I'm almost certain is going to trigger a swarm. Place three grunts at exit one and one exploder at exit two. And it, oh, okay, this is bad, but it didn't raise the swarm. Well, that's dangerous. This grunt is going to activate and move adjacent to the gunner to attack him. We then have to roll for, does the nexus spawn anything? It spawns two... My poor ammo supply, uh, one of them's going to have to go behind it. I'll try and remember it's there, because that's the only space free. So they've all activated, the spawns don't get to activate, 
the explorer it's spawning in, I believe, gets shot by the turret. Now that is a hit. Oh, I'm going to have to check if he has resistance to that. Let me just double check. He has no resistances at all. Unfortunately, that means he does explode. And that means the engineer might be about to take some damage. Yep, he does. Engineer takes one damage as the Exploder does its namesake. And then the grunts that spawned over here, one of them had to go in that space. So let's see if the turret gets him from spawning. It didn't. And then they would activate. One, two, one, two, three, one, two. I don't know if subsequent actions by the same creature, maybe spawning in doesn't trigger a, a reaction. I could have sworn it did. Either way, we'll shoot once at each of the other grunts that he hasn't shot at already. He killed both, or rather, the turret killed both, which was that one and that one, I think. Well, they're equidistant to dwarf either way. Not great at all, but not as bad as it could have been. Okay, before the driller goes through the wall, we're going to have to help, because he's got full ammo. He'll use one primary ammo to do his flamethrower attack on this grunt, because he has two adjacent, so if he rolls well, could take all of them out. Let's see here. That's pretty well. So we'll apply this fire to his first target and kill it. Then we're allowed to do adjacent, single other fire to this one, the two on the brood nexus, and that kills it as well. However, when they die, they get a free activation. Do they spawn anything? They don't. Need an exclamation mark. Very lucky. Still grunt over there, but that's someone else's problem. I think at this point we are going to break through into the chambers because ammo is tight so he's going to make his second action to be moving onto that square which in turn opens up all three caverns and then I'm going to have to spawn a bunch of stuff so we are going to bust in here so this is a bit awkward to do with the position of the camera we'll come over here to prove that I'm doing it legitimately though so the question marks I'm just going to put to one side but keep them next to where they should be so I don't know which is which Flipping this one over, first of all. Now, well, it was that way, so it goes that way, yes. That's the same one we saw last time. This one is like that, and this one is like that. So what have we got here? So this question mark is here, this question mark is here, this question mark is here, okay. So what have we got spawn-wise? Three grunts, uh, a Mactera spawn. What is that there? I can't actually tell at a glance what that is. That's one of the harder. That's a spitter. There's three upgrade, four upgrade tokens, like three or four stalagmites. All right, well, let's populate this part of the map. Well, there's danger very close now, and that symbol was another spitter. So that is really bad. That is a dangerous area with a lot of enemies that are going to get a free action probably when we draw an event in a second. Um, which also might trigger a swarm. There wasn't a third spawn point at least, but still nasty. In between takes, I also double checked the criteria by which the turret fires. It's activated, placed, or moved. So it does attack spawned enemies if they're in range. So let's see how bad this is actually going to be. Event card. Slasher emerges. Places a, uh, place a slasher on an empty ground space adjacent to you if possible, and the dwarves get to attack. All right. Quickly look one out. There's a slasher. It has to be next to the driller. So let's put him here. It's going to be a bit awkward to place, but that does mean we just come over here. Basically, two other dwarves plus the driller gets to do an attack. The driller will start. He'll use his drills. He gets to ignore resistance to pickaxe down. Oh, of course he missed. Of course he missed. Hmm. Well, the. Ooh, let's have the gunner use the last of his secondary to shoot because he's not resistant to that either and that did two and took him out. Didn't raise the swarm counter. We're living on borrowed time. We're back round to the scout who's almost dead but he has reasonable ammo. I'm going to need to think about what he does here. Alright, here we go. Scout, first action. One, two, three. He can pass over thanks to his grappling hook. He gets to attack for free after he moves. He'll use the first of his secondary, his shotgun, point blank range on the grunt there just to remove the threat easily. Goodbye. He's got two actions left. Hmm. He will move here 
And then he is pickaxing this section of wall because it opens up into the chasm section. We saw that tile last time. And he can just cross the chasm so he can kind of sneak in there is my plan. So pickaxing the wall is his last action. That's a double pickaxe. I don't think there's any other section I want him to touch. It also means that Spitter will go after him because it is the he's the closest threat now and it can't see him so it will waste its turn moving rather than attacking at range 5. So hopefully that works out. Uh, here comes the danger. Mission specific event. Okay, so this was the testing whether or not they fall over. Let me just read it. Seismic rumbles. The active dwarf rolls the damage die. If it's a crit, he stumbles. Whew, just as well, because there's no one over there to help him, so it would have cost him two actions. The gunner is going to try and get us a resupply. First action, moving here. Second action, mining the wall. You need three nighter for a resupply, but you can use gold instead of nighter. Just means I can't overclock any guns. Yeah, okay, thank goodness for that. So his third action is going to be to call the... Uh, the supply because we have two gold he just got himself one nighter so all of that is going and I'll just plop down the pod here and we'll draw the top card and see what it has in it it's got seven primary two secondary and three health good enough now he that was his third action because he moved pickaxed and then called the supply so he, I will just leave that card next to it there. He can't use it this turn. He's going to have to, though. He's going to have to take basically all the ammo. But at least he brought down help for the other dwarves because besides the engineer, the rest of them are getting kind of... Well, no, the, the trailer's doing okay. But the scout and the gunner, they're getting tapped. Event card. Oh, vantage point. You approach a sheer tower of rock. Being a good dwarf, you feel compelled to climb it and get a good view. If you aren't prone, look at the top card of either the event or the swarm deck. You can then choose whether or not to shuffle. Either way, increase swarm threat by one. Well, that triggers a swarm. So I'm going to look at what the swarm card is. And if I don't like it, I'm going to shuffle them and hope that the next card I draw is better. Uh-oh, oppressor. Uh, yeah, I'm going to shuffle those real quick. It does say shuffle, right? choose whether or not to shuffle the deck yes I shall choose to shuffle I'm gonna try and be very thorough with my shuffling but watch as it's the same card I draw off the top okay there's there's a shuffle and boom bug one exploder exit one three grunts at exit two and all creatures activate this is gonna be a nasty one we've got to activate a lot of the enemies starting with those three grunts that spawned at exit 2 though they are all within range of the turret so he is going to roll one die against all three of them and he rolled two successes so two of them are dying because that's them getting placed within range of him nothing else that got spawned did the explorer will walk adjacent to the scout this grunt and this grunt are going to walk adjacent to dwarves so they're not attacking and then we come down to this cluster. The spare can't see anybody, because there is a rock there as well. The scout is closest though, so he's going to walk into range right there. The spitter, or the, yeah, the spitball infector can't see anyone, and he can't move, so he just wastes his turn. The grunt's back here. One, two, three. Oops. One, two, three. One, two, three. I don't know how far Mactera spawn move, pardon me. They move three, same as their range. And closest threat would be the driller, so one, two, three, right there. Not so bad, but now they're in danger close range. Oh, before we move on to the engineer's turn, when the two grunts ended their move actions, that's a different thing to them being placed. Well, the one that moved in wasn't in range to start with. So that is two more rolls on the turret trying to hit them. One of them died, one of them didn't, so it's just either way a dwarf is in danger, so let's just remove that one. Now we can go on to the engineer's turn. I'm going to start by using some secondary ammo to take out the closest grunt. That's a roll two green dice, and it also does stun, but hopefully it'll just kill him. Yeah, so the stun doesn't matter. He has two actions left. Ooh, he can't really help the scout, but depending on what cards are drawn, the scout could just get killed. Because he can't shoot the... Oh, he can't even get over to the scout. So that's that's a problem in and of itself, unfortunately. 
because there's a gap and he can't... Well, he could use an action to put down his platforms, but... Let's just do a move. One, two, three... I think dwarves can shoot past each other, actually, so let's just move him there, and then he'll shoot a grenade at the Mectera here. Let's do the ranged one so it hits the Spitball Infector as well. Got to start damaging him. It's a scare. Well, one, two, three. Make him run away. This guy can't get scared, so he just stays put. Not an ideal turn, honestly, but that'll have to do. They're closing in. Increase the swarm threat by one. If it didn't trigger a swarm, activate all creatures. Oh. Well, he moves right back. These grunts, they're going to get stuck no matter which way they go because there's not enough room and they can't go past each other. So they're just going to... Oops, he took the the upgrade thing with him. There we are. Uh, the spitballer can't see anybody, so that's fine. All that is left is the spitter and the exploder sadly attacking the scout. And if they both hit him, they're going to take him out. So let me just see here. Spitter is just two damage dice, and if he gets an exclamation mark, they're also slowed. So he's slowed but takes no damage. I need to double check what that does if he survives. Uh, when it's the exploder attacks an adjacent dwarf or sentry gun, it explodes instead. Okay, so it's getting removed either way. Well, it got the runaway symbol, which means it doesn't do damage to the dwarf, thankfully. But chases away the other enemies. So he explodes. The only adjacent enemy is the spitter. Actually, I don't think they can move through each other, so he can't run away. He's going to have to stay there. That could be worse, I suppose. So my gunner down here is interacting with the supply pod. I've just put these all here to represent what's in them. He's going to take both of the secondaries, so that's it tapped in that regard. Leaving the health, and he's taking two of the primary ammo. He needs three to fill up, but I want some staying there for other dwarves. For his next action, he is going to... Hmm. I was going to say use his grenade, but his grenade isn't that good. He'll just move here. I'm not going to turn him because his minigun's too long. And he's going to shoot some primary ammo at the Mactera spawn and see what we can do. Uh, Mactera spawn, I think they don't have any resistance. I'm going to have to double check again. They're resistant to fire and pickaxes, but not to that. So he kills them. And as a free action, he'll expend more ammo to kill that grunt as well. I just want to keep the number of enemies under control. Now, he still has one action left, because that was a free action. But if he moves forwards, the spitballer can see him. Because remember, he should be here, and there is a rock there. Uh... Hmm... I think he's going to pick X that rock, even though it means he's going to get shot. Yeah. Yep, he's going to pick X the rock. No, he's not. Can I reroll that? <laughs> Deal one addition, no damage. No, that's not going to help. Nope. Okay, he just he failed to break the rock. Because I actually wanted an, an alternative path through, but couldn't get it. Fast critters, increase swarm threat by one. We're one away from another swarm. If it didn't trigger a swarm, all creatures move and attack. Frozen or stunned creatures do not. They just remove their condition. So the spitter is still blocking the way over there, so only the spitter is going to attack the scout. Uh, other than that, nothing else. I'm actually, maybe the spitballer, maybe he can see the gunner there, because he is... Like, I would say the middle to, from middle hex to middle hex, they probably could see each other. But if that is the case, I'm going to fire once with the dwarf for the action I didn't use. But let's handle the other stuff first. So the spitballer, uh, not the spitballer, the spitter, on the... Scout has slowed him again and done one damage. He's got one health left. Then the Spitballer is attacking. He only rolls one die. Oh, but if he gets a crit, the dwarf becomes prone. So the gunner is prone, but he had one unused action. I'm going to shoot the heavy revolver at him and hopefully get two. Nope, got one. That's That's fine, I suppose. So now that we're on the Engineer, I'm going to use his Rock and Stone card because there is a Supply Pod with health in the General Pool, which is, I presume is what this means. Distribute up to two health from the General Supply to other Dwarves. I'm using that to give the Scout two health of the three 
that is available in the pod, so now there's just one left over. But it might keep him alive, because there's no one over there to help him. That's a free action to use a Rock and Stone card as well. Next, he is going to move adjacent to the pod and the gunner, and use an action to pick the gunner up, because he was prone. So unfortunately that's all it's... Oh wait, no, he moved, he picked up the gunner, then he has one left. He will punt a... Uh, an HE grenade, non HE grenade, an AP grenade at the Spitballer. So that's roll two, pick the better result. And we'll take the two damage for sure. So that's him up to three of his five now. Can't do anything else though. Who thought alien eggs would be so annoying? Place an Exploder exit to activate all other creatures. Okay. So an explorer is spawned next to the turret. The turret gets to shoot it. However, if the turret successfully shoots it, it's going to destroy the turret. And of course it did. Oh, wait, that's not the right die. Sorry. You roll a green die for the, the turret. It missed. It actually missed. Never mind. So the spare is hitting the scout again. Would have killed him had he not been healed. You better believe it would. There goes that two damage. He just got back. So that's fun. And that's it, right? Because the, the grunts can't get past him. Oh, the spitballer would fire again at the gunner. Oh, it's only roll one die. It's weird having a high tier enemy only roll one die. So that is one damage. To the gunner, it's his first bit of damage. And the driller, he's got a burn. He's going to move here. And he is going to fire his flamethrower potentially twice, if he needs to, into the spitballer, who has no fire resistance. Hopefully just roll a bunch of successes here. Burn him! Two is good enough. He had two health left. Get that tanky you-know-what out of there. So he moved, he attacked, he has one action left. To give those grunts someone else to go after besides the scout, he'll do a move onto this. And it is an alien egg. So, one of those two is the last alien egg we need. And one of them is a pointless loot bug. With that, the event card is... Stuck. Lose one health to yank your foot out or take your time and become stunned. Either way, increase threat by one. You'll lose one health on the driller. Unfortunately, that does trigger a swarm card, though. Oh no, it's the card again! Place the oppressor at exit 2, facing the nearest target, activate all creatures. The oppressor is a big boy. This is going to be very dangerous, but him spawning in actually does mean he gets shot at. Unfortunately, he has two resistance, unless you're shooting him in the rear arc. Uh, oh, actually, the turret would see his rear arc, because he had to face the closest dwarf. So there is a chance it will do a damage point to him, and it did. He has seven health, though. That's him got six left. The explorer would activate and move, because he is not adjacent to a dwarf that he can see, so he's not going to try and blow up the turret. But that does mean that the turret will then shoot at him, and misses him, which is a good thing. The spitballer, or rather the spitter, will attack the scout and knock him down. So he has to be saved before we can leave, because no dwarf left behind. He's down and out, also doesn't get a turn. And the grunts then would come after one, two, three, the driller, because that would be the closest threat. We are not killing that oppressor, we're just going to have to run from it. We're going to have to kind of circle around to get out of here. So it would be the scout, but scout is dead. We're on the floor asking for help. Gunner's going to activate then, and go one, two. And then he's going to do a minigun action to take out both those grunts. So... Roll three of these, get one success, hopefully on camera. Got multiple successes. Use up his last of his ammo, but a free action to shoot at the other one. Got that one as well. So he still has two actions. And I'm placing my bet that it's this one I need. So he's going to go one, two, and then for a final action, pickaxe the wall here. Smash. I technically should roll the reward die to get like gold or nighter, but at this point, we're just running. So that's his turn. Pick up the scout on the way and hope for the best. Unsettling rumblings. Increase swarm threat by one. If this didn't trigger a swarm, draw another event card. It did not trigger a swarm. Mission specific event. So the gunner has to test to see whether or not he falls over. 
He does. Of course he does. Excellent. Well, safe to say the engineer is also in danger. He is activating and he's going to go one, two, three. He's going to use his pancake gun, as we refer to it in the video game, to put a platform there. Now, is that a free action? Uh, one action to place one or more platforms unlimited range. In that case, he'll put down a couple more then. He'll put one there just in case we need it so that there's a bridge across the gap. And then his final action will be... Uh, one, two, three. He can't get adjacent to the gunner and then pick him up, so he's just going to have to move over there. With the danger at our heels. Cave leech attack! Uh, if someone damages it, it will not attack. Let's use secondary ammo from the... Ooh, let's, uh, let's do it from the engineer. He's fine. It's too green. And he got it. No cave leech. No eating of brains today. Not so bad as far as events go there. So the driller's first action is to pick the gunner up. And then his second action will be to move. He's going to go one, two, and drill into the wall there. Which ends that movement action and also fills this gap in which the other dwarves need to escape. And then he's going to murderize this spitter that caused the scouts so many problems because I hate it. <laughs> Primary ammo. Burn him. Burn him to bits. Yeah, there you go. Get out of there. Good grief. It's an action, actually maybe two actions to revive a dwarf. I'll double check after we do his event card. He won't be doing it this turn either way, but I need to know for next turn. Cave Tremors. Each dwarf rolls the die. <sighs> Stop knocking them over. Uh, driller. Nope. Gunner. Yes. Engineer. Yes. Okay, fantastic. At least none of the monsters activated, but both the dwarfs over here are prone on the ground. So as we cycle back around, I was just double checking there, it's only one action to revive a fallen dwarf. They don't draw event cards on their turn, however you are supposed to raise the swarm counter if they're unconscious when it wouldn't be their turn. So the swarm counter is actually two higher now, because this is the second turn in which the scout is on the ground. And that triggers a swarm card. No event card, just a swarm card. Web spitter. Place one web spitter exit two and two grunts at exits one and three. I think we can just do that right now. The turret is still up. So two grunts at exits one and three. So two grunts. Actually, I'm going to do myself a favour and put it there, which means the turret shoots at it, doesn't kill it. And a web spitter, my nemesis, at exit two. It's awkward to put in because of the oppressor, but the turret will also shoot at it. It hits him. Again, I keep forgetting if web spitters have resistance. They don't, but they have, whoop, they don't, but they have two health. Very nearly knocked the models over there. So he's got one health remaining. But thankfully nothing too bad. Well, as annoying as it is, Gunner spends two actions standing up. And then, you know what? He'll spend the other action picking up the Engineer, so the Engineer gets a full turn. So, Engineer will go after this event card. Very boring turn, unfortunately. Ouch, collect one nighter. Alright. That's actually a fairly okay event card. We're not going to use the nighter, but we'll just go straight to the engineer's turn then. So engineer's on his feet. He's going to walk onto this. Please be the egg. Ah, it's not. Well, one, two, three. One, two. There's the last egg. All eggs collected. And then one, two, three. Now we just need to get out alive with every dwarf. The drop pod is back. Which way was it orientated? It was that way. Like that. The drop pod is back, we just need to get out alive, and that is easier said than done. Event card for the engineer, more grunts, place a grunt at exit 2 and 3, but there is no exit 3. Does the turret shoot it? Yes it does, I won't bother spawning it then. And then finally, the driller, one action, get the scout back on his you know what feet. Boom. Then use your flamethrower to kill those two grunts and might immediately kill him again. Thank you. That's, that's too far there if it's invisible. Kills them both. Third action. Run away. One, two, three. Although, unfortunately, <laughs> they need the gunner to fire a zipline over that gap or the engineer to put down some more pancakes. Otherwise, they ain't getting out. He could drill through the wall round the side, I suppose. Event card for the driller. Mission specific event. Does he fall over? No, he does not for a change. 
So we're back round to the scout on one health, and he is running for his life. He is going one, two, three, one, two, three. He's inside the pod, so we don't draw an event card. He can see a spitter, though, so he's looking for a little bit of revenge. His final action, he is cracking out his assault rifle. And he is murderizing it, because it had one health left after the turret shot it. Oops, it was a pick one situation, incidentally. But doesn't matter, because he's dead. So no event card for him, so we can just go straight to the gunner. The gunner, is it an action for him to do a zipline? One action to place one or more ziplines adjacent to your space. One, two, three, one. And then he'll shoot his zipline. So let me just look those out real quick. Zipline. Zipline. Across the chasm gap. I guess it would kind of be like, it would be like that, but either way. Those squares are now traversable. Not for him, because his turn is now over. But the others can get out at least. Grabber attack, okay. The secondary of the driller will be used to try and save him here. Good enough. The grabber does not grab him, because it would have dragged him further into the cave and knocked him over. Which would have been terrible. Engineer is just going to run for his life, so we might as well just keep recording. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. He actually got to the pod. He's not on his square in the pod, but he is in the pod. So I believe you don't draw an, in, uh, an event card, because he is in the pod. The driller is also getting in the pod. One, two, three. One, two. I guess they'll just stand in the wrong squares. I presume that's allowed. Like you're allowed to stand in a square that isn't your starting location. It doesn't draw an event card. It just rolls back around. The scout obviously can just stand there. No event card drawn. The gunner runs for his life. Two, three. And he gets in. And by the skin of our teeth, we make it out alive. So without a doubt, that was by far the hardest mission. Which makes sense, I guess, because we're going numerically. But we were running out of time on the bar down here. Mostly because of the scout forcing up when he was downed for two turns. But yeah, that was nasty. Thankfully we didn't have to deal with the oppressor, the hardest enemy in the base game. Right here. Very awkward to, to fit in actually, because although he's just two hexes wide, this claw makes it a little awkward to move him around. So I'm glad we didn't really have to deal with him that much. If we do end up doing the next mission, mission four is search and retrieve. And it's quite a long winding path with a couple of unknown caves. We're lo oh, it's the mini mule mission from the, the video game. We're looking for specific drones you have to repair and also some apocalypse again well if you do want to see more by all means continue supporting the series and letting me know if you want to go above and beyond to support the channel in general please consider becoming a channel member or pressing the thanks button it helps out a whole lot and is reinvested in the channel enjoy the rest of your day rock and stone and i shall see you again some other time stuff for now